Hi, George here, and today we're going to talk about ZBrush, and most importantly, how we went from this little thing right here to a test print of this guy right here. So last week I ended off with the model being finished inside of Maya. Um, and I did a quick test print, uh, not only of half the face, but also of the entire Chaos Orb by itself on my home PrinterBot printer. And it came out all right, but the slicer, uh, I was using Cura for this, uh, had a difficult time because I made some really nasty geometry that had giant holes in it. It was not manifolds, that's for sure. And, uh, well, you saw last week what happened with the hairs on the sides of the head. In addition, I had a number of comments from different YouTubers and so forth, and I think some folks on Reddit as well, who were mentioning, um, all the hair looks like crap. And you're right, I completely agree with you. Um, the image, the reference image was 128 by 128, and yes, there is that pendant. Thank you all for sending me a time and time again with every video I put out there that there is a pendant out there, and also telling me that the uh, chaos orb should be flat like the pendant. I completely disagree with you. Uh, a chaos orb is an orb. Going from this guy to this guy required ZBrush. So let's go ahead and dive right in and see what I had to deal with this week. Let's go on in. All right, so here we are inside of ZBrush. Now, I don't get to use ZBrush very often. But because I don't get to use it very often, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Um, I love this program because every time I do need it for a project, it works, but I need time to remember. So I finagle things and mess around quite a bit. I uh, cut up the faces and when I get frustrated, I just make multiple copies. But after about an hour or so of frustration, I finally dive into the face. And the first thing I do is make a lot of tweaks that I had problems with with the low poly model. So here I add a lot more subdivisions to the surface. Uh, in ZBrush, we can go up to millions of polygons and we will by the end of this thing. So it's easy for me to sling things around. Mainly I'm using the move tool and the standard tool inside of um, inside of ZBrush. Um, that's just because it's what I'm most comfortable with. And the last time I used ZBrush, it was a really old version and a lot of the brushes have changed since then. So anyway, here it is. I'm just sculpting in those features, making them a little more human-like, tweaking things that I per particularly didn't like. So I showed this off to some of the students at work uh, who are big fans of Path of Exile and you know they had some comments on what should or shouldn't be done. Um, a lot of people online also had comments about generally that the face and so forth. So I, I'm trying to tweak all those aspects, make it a little, you know, there's only so much reference material I can go off of, right? I've got the pendant, which is kind of the highest quality I can go with in terms of information, but then I have that tiny little 128 by 128 image. So what I'm doing here is I'm really just freeforming it. Uh, I'm doing anything that I think looks right. Uh, scaling in the different features, moving the ears around, the eyes, and so forth and so on. A lot of problems with the eyes. Uh, Got to tweak them quite a bit. The brow's a bit severe as well, so I'll be modifying that. So here I am once again, adding more features, smoothing them in, making it look a little bit more pronounced. Something I was really worried about was how smooth the model might appear. When it's 3D printing and the scale of the 3D print, sometimes you want to accentuate these features to make sure they show up in the slicer and actually look like something uh, when you're done. Probably play around with these lips way too much. Every time I look at this thing and come back to it, I, uh, <laughs> I decide to make changes to it. So I should probably just stop here. Tweaking a lot of the nose as well. I'll come back to that many, many times throughout this video. Now, here's where I decide uh, to pull in the eye, but really what I'm thinking about is that eyebrow. Uh, I need to put a brow in there, and as I first start doing this, I look at it and I think, oh, this looks like crap. Um, but I say, you know what, let's just go with it. Let's see what it ends up looking like when I'm all done editing. And I gotta say, you know, after I threw it down there and did a little bit of blurring and zoomed out from it, not so bad. You know, I mean, it could be a lot worse, right? So, the hair. A lot of complaint, not complaints necessarily, but a lot of th feedback on the hair. Um, some funny, some uh, not so funny, but uh, I didn't like it either. And since it did seem like it was supposed to be some sort of a, a statue or form, I decide to, I think this is David, right? I steal his hair, and then I'm going to use it as a height map inside of uh, ZBrush, or an alpha map really, but it becomes height when I pull it up. So to make that work, I need the color black, which is going to be kind of the zero value, and then I need the color white in this case, which is going to become the most pronounced or pulled out value. 
So once I have my alpha, I bring it in here and I'm just gonna use my, my standard brush to pull in those different hair features. Now I don't mirror all the hair, obviously, because that would look really bad. So instead what I do is I do turn symmetry off at some point and I begin just sort of uh, pulling out parts of the hair myself and then laying down parts of the hair that um, will not be symmetric. So asymmetrical hairs down the center of the area. Back is looking a little bit wonky. So I go in there and add some more uh, strokes and uh, I just push and pull some things. Now I got to add those, those sideburns in there. So I use the masking tool to mask off those areas. And I just put that last bit down on the sides. Uh, after we did, now this is after I actually did the first print. And the first thing that was laughed at was the fact that the eyes look kind of cross-eyed. So I go ahead in there and I move those eyes around. Now I'm thinking about those eyebrows. They didn't show up in the 3D print hardly at all, and I wanted them to be accentuated a bit. So I tried to look for eyebrows, didn't find anything, realized I will just use my own. So I uh, go, I have a student take a photo of it, and I edit in Photoshop to also make a black and white image that'll be used to pull out these features. I take a look at the eyebrows, uh, I'll take a look at the reference material and decide that I want the eyebrows to be a bit more pronounced. So I actually am going to warp those eyebrows up ever so slightly in just a second after I'm done saving things out. Now I also screw up and I have the thing inverted. So inside of ZBrush, I end up inverting the image and making it proper. Actually, no, never mind. I guess I didn't Photoshop. So I invert the image, bring in those brows. And yes, they are a bit extreme. Uh, they're very, very pronounced and noisy. But when I print this thing, I, I do want them to show up. The pendant has them featured. So I wanna make sure I have the same thing on mine. Now is around the time when uh, I realized when I try to place this head on the desk, it rolls right off. So uh, I decide to try to flatten out that area and I'm trying to remember what brush I'm supposed to use for this. Um, ZBrush recommended the planar brushes, but it went a little bit too far. And every time I try to cut it doesn't quite get all the way up to the chin, and I was worried about support being printed under there. I wanted to try to make the whole bottom half of the face print out uh, without really needing any support down there. So here's me just fiddling around for a very long time with this, trying to figure out how the hell to get this to work. Eventually, I start looking up reference on different websites and try to find something, and at the end of the day, what I do is I just use two different brushes, an adaptive one, and then I end up being able to slice it down enough to get what I want. Here's where I am failing at remembering how to slice things in half. So I am masking half the face and trying to split it up by polygroups, but that doesn't work. It ends up splitting it along a really kind of nasty edge. So uh, I continue in frustration for several minutes doing this until finally I look up online and find a, a video on YouTube uh, explaining how to do this. After watching just a few moments of it, I remember exactly what I'm supposed to do. Oh yeah, there's the frustration right there. Um, whenever I get frustrated, I just uh, spam the screen with whatever uh, tool I'm currently working on um, to see what it looks like. So here I am continuing to look. Here's that nice gentleman's video. And uh, like, I only watch just a minute of it because of that immediately I remember what I'm supposed to do here. And uh, I go ahead and use that slicing tool to slice them on up. And uh, here's me redistributing the different subtools and making sure that they're all combined into one. So what I'm basically doing here is I'm continuing to slice things up and uh, make sure that they're together. I'm pushing them apart using the ZBrush move tool, which uh, I have never been able to use before now. Somehow I, I understood how this damn thing was supposed to work and everything was moved around properly. Now I do have these giant gaps, and I gotta tell you right now, I'm rocking, what is this, 22.1 million, uh, no, 44 million verts. So there's no chance in hell of me bringing this back into Maya. I actually tried, did not work. Um, so I had to do everything in here. Now this isn't the final print that I'm going to do. You'll notice that I got sort of cut off and I had made a mistake when I split things apart. I didn't give it enough um, leeway. 
So uh, this is, uh, but the problem was that I ended up running out of system memory and hard drive memory, and I had to throw away the video of the final one. But anyway, that's what that's looking like. Uh, when I did this projection, when I projected one onto the other to get all that detail back, it did cause a couple artifacts here and there, and that's what I was cleaning up. So with, with that being said, you know, for this video, uh, I've got at least this head fully printed out and done. Uh, came out really well, at least I thought it did. All the features came out well, except for those eyebrows, very hard to see them, but the lips, the nose, the eyes, uh, except for them being a little cross-eyed. Ears really well, the hair I'm liking a lot compared to the, the hair we had before. Um, it, it just feels like that's what it would be. Uh, I've already sliced this thing in half and pulled it apart, um, but I wasn't able to get a 3D print done in time for this video. So what you'll be hopefully seeing in the next update, which will be sometime next week, probably later in the week so I can do all these prints. But I've got quite a few different ugh, materials here that we're going to be using. Uh, I've got copper filament from Frontline Filament, bought off Amazon. I have a bronze filament that just arrived the other day, uh, 1.75 millimeter Bro 3D filament. Uh, I have never tried this before, so I'm not sure how it's going to turn out. The big problem with the metal is I've noticed i got to use a really slow print speed, at least on my home printer, so it's going to take a while. Um, we also got some Hatchbox uh, wood filament. I love this stuff. Um, they ran out of it for a while, but uh, I got some more eventually. It sounds stupid, but it gives it really nice, um, uh, a really nice diffuse surface that, that doesn't really have any specular highlights. It looks really nice, and it's lighter. And uh, I did try this. Now, this my wife bought for me. I have no idea where she bought it from. I know it's on Amazon, but I have no idea who did it. And it's supposed to be a gold filament with some form of gold, whether it's fool's gold or something else. But it does, it's supposed to have some metal in there. I tried printing with this, and it was absolute failure every single time. So um, I'll see, give it a shot again. But anyway, the last thing I had to do was actually... Um, this guy wasn't printed flat. That is, they had lots of bumps and coarse things going on with the bottom. So what I had to do was flatten it out. So let's take a look at that really quick. So what you're seeing here is uh, my horrible home oven, very old. But uh, the idea here is I heated it up to uh, 250, and then I think I I'm, I'm kicked it up to around 300 and something because it didn't work very well. But all I'm doing is I'm taking the 3D print, and I'm pushing it right down on the surface of that oven pan after I'm done. Uh, that heats up enough to where it becomes um, malleable. And I just keep pushing down with some pretty good bit of pressure until finally the whole thing flattens out on the bottom. And then I'm left with a very good flat bottom where this thing is able to stay upright without falling over. Uh, the new one, the new print, won't have this problem because I took the time to slice everything off at the bottom. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I uh, hope you see that we're getting really close now to finishing this whole thing up. And uh, hopefully the next video is going to be the last one before this project you know, finally finished. So check out sometime next week for the, the final Chaos Orb. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye.